We're busy looking at operations on sets. In the previous video, we looked at some basic operations. Now we're going to combine some operations. So let's take a look. Here we have four sets, P, Q, R, and S. And we're jumping right in. We're going to do some things with them. Now, yet again, like I said in the previous video, if you prefer learning visually, if that helps with a picture, let's put them on a picture. Now, we told the universal set is all real numbers. So all real numbers is the universal set from minus infinity to infinity, all of them. P is from minus 2 to 4. So minus 2 to 4, we have the set P. It's an interval. Minus 2 is excluded, 4 is included. That's what P looks like. All right. Q is an interval from 0 to 5. From 0 to 5, I must just fit everything in here. That's Q. 0 is included, 5 is excluded. R is all integers between 2 and 5. I'm just going to rewrite that one. It's nicer if we tabulate it, 3 and 4. That looks much better than the complicated way it's written. So R is 3 and 4. So the numbers 3 and 4, just two dots, that's R. And S is all the integers from minus 3 to 0. So that is minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, and 0. So we've got minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, and 0. Those are all S. So let's jump right in. So the first question is the difference, or without S, without P union Q. Now, I'm not putting an equal sign there, because we've got to do some before work. We need to find P union Q. So what is P union Q? Look at P and Q, put them all together, and it's everything from minus 2 to 5. Both are excluded. So then I can now say, well, S without P union Q. So we go to S, and we take away everything that's in P union Q. So we go to S, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0. Which of those numbers are in P union Q? Well, minus 3 is not in there, so that stays. Minus 2, is minus 2 in P union Q? Nope, so that stays. Minus 1, is minus 1 in P union Q? Yes, so it's got to go. Is 0 in P union Q? Yes, so it's got to go. So I'm left with minus 3 and minus 2. The next one, R without Q's complement. So I first need to find Q's complement. So Q is from 0 to 5. This is the universal set is all real numbers. So Q's complement is everything, all real numbers, except that. So that's from minus infinity all the way to 0. And then again from 5 to infinity. So that's Q's complement. We're looking for R without Q's complement. So I'm going to R. I'm taking away everything that's in Q's complement. R has the numbers 3 and 4 in. Now, the numbers 3 and 4 are either of them in Q complement. No, Q complement goes to 0 and then jumps over to 5. So 3 and 4 is not in there. So that's just the set R. We didn't. Seems like we didn't even have to do the work beforehand, but we needed to see that. All right, S intersection P without Q. So let's first find S intersection P. S and P. P is an interval, S is just dots. So what have they got in common? The intersection is what they have in common. So minus 3 they don't have in common. Now minus 2 they don't have in common. Minus 1 they've got in common. 0 they've got in common. Where's S and P? Yes, so they've got minus 1 and 0 in common. But just those who know intervals, that's all they have in common. So S intersection P without Q. So I start with my, minus 1 and 0 and I take Q away from there. Q has doesn't have minus 1, but Q has 0. So I'm taking the 0 out and I'm left with minus 1. Next one, same sets. And I'm going to flick back to look at them if I need them on the number line. I'm just going to write these out again. That's 3, 4. And this one is minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0. All right, R's intersection with P's complement. So first I need to find P complement. P complement, P is from minus 2 to 4. P's complement is the all real numbers except that, because universal set is all real numbers. So it's everything from minus infinity to minus 2 included, because minus 2 is not in P complement. 
union everything from 4, but I exclude 4 from the complement because 4 is in P all the way to infinity. So that's what P complement looks like. Now I want R's intersection with P complement. What have they got in common? R is just 3 and 4. So is the number 3 in P complement? Nope. Is the number 4 in P complement? No. So I just have an empty set there. P intersection Q's complement. I first need to find P intersection Q. What do P and Q have in common? Everything from 0 to 4. Is 0 included? Well, 0 is in both, so it's included. 4 is in both, so 4 is included. That means P intersection Q's complement is all the real numbers except that. So from minus infinity to 0, and again from 4 to infinity. And the last one here, Q without P complement. So we need P complement first. We saw that up there. Minus infinity to minus 2. Union 4 to infinity. So what would Q without P complement be? Go to Q. Take away P's complement. If you want to visualize it, you can look at, you can sketch them on a number line and see what's left if you take the whole of P complement away from Q. But what you're going to be left with is everything from 0 to 4. Because I start with Q. From 0 to 5, I take away everything that's in P complement. This first part of P complement isn't there, so I'm not paying attention to it. But then from 4 to infinity, I'm taking away. So I'm left with from 0 to 4. 0 is in Q. It's not in P complement. 4. Did I take 4 away? No. 4 is not actually in P complement, but it is in Q. So there we go. So... No matter what the sets are we give you, we can ask you to find union, intersection, complement, difference. You must be able to do all of them or any combination of them. And the better you, more you try, the better you get at it. Now, one more operation on sets to mention is that of a cross product. Or called the Cartesian product of two sets. Now, it's called Cartesian product because if I've got two sets. And firstly, these sets cannot be empty. Non-empty sets A and B. Neither of them can be empty. So if I've got two non-empty sets, the Cartesian products is a bunch of ordered pairs. Now, the way it's written here looks like an interval, but it's not. It's an ordered pair. All right, so we need to just make sure we know what we are defining. So the Cartesian product of two sets generates ordered pairs, where the first entry comes from the first set and the second entry from the second set. So it's all the possible combinations. Right, so let's look at an example. I've got a set A here, minus 2, 0, 1, set B, 2, 3. Their Cartesian product is a set of ordered pairs, where the first entry comes from A, so it's minus 2, and the second entry comes from B. So minus 2 are matching up with 2, and minus 2 are matching up with 3. Then I take the second entry from A, 0, and I match it with 2, 0, and I match it with 3 from B. Then I take the third entry, 1, and I match it with the first entry from B, and I take one, and I match it with the second entry from B. So it's all the combinations of ordered pairs I can generate where the first digit comes out of A and the second out of B. Now we've got, this is A cross product with B. B's cross product with A, or Cartesian product, looks totally different. B's Cartesian product with A does not generate what we've got here, then the first entry must come from B. So it's the other way around. So make sure you get it right. So they are different. It's not a commutative operation. So the first entry must come from B, so it must be a 2. And that I must match with each and every one of those. So there'll be three of them. Then I must match three. With the three entries from two. So there'll be no, another three. So these two sets have both have six entries, but they look totally different. So two I need to match up with minus two, naught, and one. Three I need to match up with minus two, naught, and one. So they are my ordered pairs I've generated. And then just to say, if I say squared, a set squared, what I mean is the Cartesian product of the set with itself. So B squared is B's Cartesian product with itself. So the first entry comes from B and the second entry comes from B. 
So I must match B with both entries from B. So B has to be matched, the 2 has to be matched with 2 and with 3. And then the 3 has to be matched with 2 and the 3 has to be matched with 3. And there we go. That is the Cartesian product of two sets.